Welcome to the Paperless Productivity Podcast, where we give you the tips, tricks, and know-how to solve your biggest workflow challenges and bring greater productivity into your workplace every day. Today, we're chatting with Christy Schultz, one of our recruiters for ImageSoft, along with OnBase Administrator Nathan Armley. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Thanks. Now, Nathan, you've been on the show before for episode 14 when we talked about using OnBase for human resources, but this is Christy's first time on the podcast, so Mm -hmm. glad to have you here. Thank you. All right. So in this episode, we're taking that original concept of using OnBase for human resources, and we're going to get a little bit more specific. So Christy and Nathan are going to paint us a picture of what life is like with a very small HR department and a rapidly growing workforce and how they manage it all. So to start, can you tell me what things were like before you put this new system in place? What tools did you use to track your applicants, and what kind of online services are you using? Well, um, so our HR department consists of Leanne Eastman, um, our HR manager, and myself, the sole recruiter. And we have gone, um, we are now up to 130 employees. Um, And when I started with ImageSoft, we were simply using OnBase as a repository. Mm And tracking everything with an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, yeah, written. Um, That's tedious. You know, yes. And I would have to, worksheets that I would have to email to the manager, wait for them to complete, get back from them, upload them into OnBase. So um, this process has really simplified and um Simplified my process. A lot of a lot of color coded folders in Outlook. <laughs> yes, for there the were managers. exactly. They would have little folders that they would go into and color code each candidate as to what whether or not they liked the candidate. And okay. So I'm sure it was very nice to look at, but <laughs> probably not so useful. No. Yeah. Outlook. I'm not going to bash on Microsoft Office, but oh, Outlook no. is not the best tool to do any kind of management like that so well and I would imagine especially as it grows you know it's harder to scale you know and keep all those systems and then I would imagine if there's you know I know it's a very small department but if there's someone that needs to step in someone might not know what that color coding means exactly yeah there's a lot of a lot of places where where things could could go wrong so okay so how did you start to engage you know managers or department heads to review resumes once you got this kind of system in place um, how did you document their interviews and collect all of that information back with OnBase? Well with the new system it is a one step it's a one shop one step shop Mm -hmm. Um, you know our managers are you know utilizing OnBase every day so it's you know they go into applicant tracking and they can they get an email once I push a resume through to go in and review that resume and then from there they can choose whether they like the candidate or whether they decline the candidate they can leave me notes um, and then that flows back through to me and then the process you know continues on from there but it's you know on base is nice because it's I don't have to send emails to the managers anymore on base does it for me oh that's nice Kind of automates the process. Yeah, yes. they would always they would tend to lose the emails previously, mm-hmm. and they'd be like, "Christy, can you send this?" to Yeah, me? can you send the resume oh, to me again? Yeah. I can't find it, and yep. it's you know, even if three days later they want to go back and relook at the resume, um, you know, for candidates that they've talked to, they can go back and look at their pre screens for if they're talking to four different candidates, mm-hmm. they can go back and compare the notes. It's all right there. Okay, great. Yeah, no more searching through email. There's just filters we've got set up within three or four clicks um, maybe two or three they can get right to to everything they need to see you know if they're recruiting for position a they can search by position a and say these are all the candidates i have for here let me review all the resumes again okay great okay so you mentioned the department uses on base which is you know for those who don't know an enterprise content management system and that helps to store all the documents you know and just for full disclosure for everybody listening uh, ImageSoft also sells on base uh, but other than the obvious benefit of knowing the solution so well as a reseller, um, what made you guys in-house decide to want to build an applicant tracking system with an on-base rather than subscribe to like a cloud solution or something? I think I can probably take this question. Yeah. Uh, when we looked into, me personally, when we looked into making some enhancements and some big changes to the applicant tracking uh, system we did have in place, I looked at a lot of cloud solutions and they're really good. but. It's, it's another application you have to manage. They're, they offer A, B, C, D, and E, and you may only need A and B. Hmm. And 
it's uh, a little bit cumbersome. We can't make quick changes if we need to. Whereas on base, we we literally built the entire application from the ground up. So okay. it wasn't like, okay, let's find a cloud solution that has most of the features that we want, but mm-hmm. we're going to pay for a whole bunch that we don't need. It's it's let's build exactly what we need, and then we can make quick, rapid changes. And a good example of that is a few months ago, Christy came to me with a complaint and says, I really don't like how this part of this solution works. Yeah. So I said, well, let's rip it out and rebuild it in a whole new way. And we got it up shortly. It would have been faster, but, you know, I had a baby. So it kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of out of the office for a little bit. But um, we were able to rapidly get that out within a couple months and mm-hmm. roll out training to the managers. Um, and it, it, Christy said it's, I mean, you can talk to it a little bit more, but it's made your life a, a whole lot easier. Oh, it's great. It's, yeah. I mean, I... Why use a, another tool mm-hmm. when you have a tool that you can customize, you know, the way you need it to yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it really is the best of both worlds. Okay. And even even if you don't have something like OnBase, I would still advocate for it because it, it really is point and click, configure, make anything I want to make. Yeah. So, and actually that, that makes me wonder, is it, if you don't have someone, I mean, I think a lot of businesses have some sort of like an IT, but if, if you don't have someone in-house who feels real uh, comfortable with customizing like that, I mean, does the solution have options like that where it is kind of a little bit out of the box, but you have the option to, to change it up if you need to? Uh, they do have some solutions like that, yeah. but they have a lot of resources uh, Highland, who makes on base, has yeah. a lot of resources online for training. They've got forums and stuff to learn. And there's a, there's a week long course you can take, instructor led, uh, very good, very thorough um, on the exact tool that we use to to build the solution. Mm-hmm. And I can say with confidence, if you if you do that, just a little bit of self training, you can probably build what we built. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like it works for a lot of different scenarios, you know, whether you, you have, uh, you know, a full in-house IT department that can make those custom changes or, you know, it's it's fairly easy to be able to kind of start off on your own and, and then get fancy later if you want to yep. with the customization. Yep, exactly. That's great. Okay, so how has the recruiting process now changed with this in place? You know, how do you keep the resumes? You talked a little bit about how you keep the resumes organized, but but what are some of the other um, nuances that that have changed since bringing this solution on? Well, we have a whole workflow. Um, So once the resume is uploaded into the system, the managers, like I said, have the um, ability to go in and review resumes, you know, decline a resume if they don't like it, um, if the skill set isn't there. Um, and then if they do like it, that they can push it through to me and everything just flows to cues. So every day I come in, I open up on base and I look at my cues where, where um, we have candidates. So if someone has a um, resume that they like, they push it through to pre-screen, I will call and do my initial pre-screen. If I think that the candidate still meets the qualifications that we're looking for, I'll push them through to a phone interview. The manager gets an email that the phone interview has been scheduled. I do also schedule it in their Outlook calendar. Um, We haven't integrated that just yet, but I know that that's something that I think Nathan has said that we could potentially do in the future. Um, We I still do it outside um, within Outlook, but they go once the um, interview gets scheduled, they go right in. They click on their phone interview um, object. They complete the phone interview worksheet right there. They can do it while they're on the phone with the candidate, and then they choose their disposition. And again, it just flows through the process. If they want a phone interview, then they go to schedule phone interview queue. I get the email that I need to reach out to the candidate and schedule an in-person. So it just all flows with the workflow. It's great. It's not like you're manually moving anything either. It's really, I'm going to click a button that says schedule pre-screen. Yes. It displays your pre-screen. You type in the candidate, you click save, and then it goes and, and moves on to the next step in the process. Right. And it makes it easy on the managers too. You probably have the hardest job in terms of using the system most interactivity the managers when they're complete with their interview we have some core value stuff and you know whatever your organization may have that can be put in there as to what you evaluate a candidate on but at the end there's going to be a disposition say yeah let's move this person to an in-person interview or you know no i don't think i don't think so whatever that may be but you just select that disposition you click save and then it does everything it's supposed to do so 
uh, it's it's really we make it as simple as possible for for the end users. Excellent. Yes. No more having to print a piece of paper, fill it in, send it back to me. Mm-hmm. You know, me upload it. It's all right there. Excellent. As much as some people at a paperless company still love their paper. <laughs> Well, oh, you know, old habits are hard to break, oh, you know? So, so. so hard. Yeah, but I imagine, if anything, even if even if they do want to print out that paper or whatever, it doesn't hold up the whole process. Correct. Yeah. By them wanting to, you know, print those out or, or anything yeah. like that, you got to have for their own reference. Right. Yep. And it's nice because I'm not having to track them down for yes. that. Um, we have it set up so that they have, I think, a day to complete their interview worksheet. And if it's not completed within a day, they start getting daily emails from OnBase. Oh, okay. Hey, you need to go in and complete this interview worksheet. Hey, you need to complete, you know. So I'm not having to do that. <laughs> OnBase is doing it for me. And if they, if they wait long enough, then the then HR they, manager gets yes. copied and then the CEO gets copied. And right. then, oh, yeah. occasionally, levels. Occasionally they'll face the wrath of Christy when they still won't do it. She'll go kind of, you know, whap their, yeah. their hands with a ruler to get what she needs. <laughs> but. But but it can be the bad cop as much as possible, Correct. you know. It can it can help to make sure that those those awkward conversations, those yes. awkward lunchroom conversations, happen less frequently. I imagine. Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we talked a little bit about you know engaging the managers and and you know how they can get some of the the information that they need and making sure that it's properly tracked and all that. So can you tell me again or, or help help describe what does it look like when they've made a decision? What does it look like from there? How do they notify you, and what is the next steps? Again, like Nathan, like Nathan mentioned, it's when they complete their interview worksheet, mm-hmm. they simply select a disposition, which is a drop down. Okay. In then that's right within their interview worksheet in OnBase, and if they, um, you know, if they're conducting a phone interview and they want an in person interview, mm-hmm. then they'll just choose in person oh, interview. Will be in there. I get notified through OnBase. Um, I get an email sent to me from OnBase that mm-hmm. says, um, you know, Christy, you need to call the candidate and schedule an in-person interview, whatever the next step may be. Um, for some departments, they do, after a phone interview, they do a technical review, so I send out the technical review. Okay. Um, but it's all th- by clicking that disposition. That's okay. all they have to do. Wow. Um, when they have in person interviewed the candidate, and it's the last Typically, that's the last step. Um, and if they want to make an offer, mm-hmm. they simply choose make an offer. Got it. They have to fill in, you know, what they want that offer to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of that information, once they hit save, save and close, all that information gets sent directly to me, which allows me then to go into OnBase, mm-hmm. and I create the offer letter right there in OnBase. Oh, excellent. And we, have, we have several templates preloaded, so depending on – if it's an intern, an exempt, or a non-exempt employee, uh, it will put different language into okay. that template. Um, yeah. And then it also allows Christy to go it, through her background information. And yep, re- I can send yep. out. Yep, I can send out background screening from there. Mm, um, okay. And and it allows me to customize the offer letter. So mm. if there's certain language that we need to include in there, um, you know, it allows me to still customize it. That's wonderful. Yeah. So as easy as possible. I mean, these based on the podcast I did with Leanne previously, the managers have a lot to worry about, as we talked about during there. So as as easy as we can make this, and I think we've achieved that. Yeah, so they can get get right back to, you know, handling what they need to and look at, you know, what that person's going to do to help grow their team and and grow their role. So exactly. that's, That's excellent. All right, so at any given point, you, you could have a number of different departments looking at candidates. So how do you keep track of all of them and, and make sure everyone is receiving the appropriate follow up? How do you how do you make sure that everybody is lined up, that the right candidate is with the right manager and everything like that, other than color coding? <laughs> <laughs> no more color coding. No more color no, coding. No more color coding. Um, it, that's the beauty of OnBase. I mean, it keeps me organized because mm-hmm. everybody is attached to a requisition. Okay. So there's no way really for me to confuse for me to make that confusion because mm-hmm. everything's atta- every single candidate or applicant is attached to a requisition which has you know the position that they're interviewing for the okay. manager that is responsible for hiring for that um, position so yeah. it's it's all based on that yeah and we, we make it very visible throughout the system so when when Christy's looking at an applicant there's going to be a little filter on there that says okay you know Kate you're attached to a, a, a marketing specialist or whatever mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then 
we have other scenarios uh, where somebody may go through the process as one candidate and then it isn't a fit, but Christy identifies, oh, maybe they're a fit for this other open oh, position yeah. we have. So then we'll attach them to that position or requisition or, or job order, whatever your organization may call it. Mm-hmm. And you're not only going to have have visible everything they've ever been attached to, but you'll have the history of everything, all the interviews, yes. all that stuff, documentation. So okay. that, it's very visible. I, I think you'd have a, I think it's impossible to lose track with the amount of stuff we've got in there to, to make it easy to keep track. Yes. And, and, and I can tell you, I mean, there have been times throughout, you know, recruiting is like a roller coaster. You know, Mm -hmm. you're very busy, then you slow down, you're busy, you slow down. And even in the busiest times Mm -hmm. that I have had, it's just nice to know that everything is in one spot and Mm -hmm. it, and it truly is all organized. Um, I, it almost makes it you know, foolproof in a way, you know, and, and somebody could come in, you know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, what happens if I, you know, if I'm not in, Yeah. you know, they're my HR manager and my director, they have been trained on the system. So they too can go in and Mm -hmm. see, oh, okay, well, schedule a phone interview. So I guess I need to reach out to these people and schedule phone interviews if Christy's not going to be here, Mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's easy for someone to come in and see where people are in the process. So when you go on your month long trip to Europe, Yes. Everybody will still be handled. People will still get hired. Right. That sounds great. <laughs> That's excellent. Yes. So, you know, and that actually made me think about, Nathan, when, when you were talking about, um, you know, if, if one candidate maybe isn't the right fit for one area but is identified for another. What about how do you guys keep track of if someone applies but maybe you don't have something open at that time? You know, and you, you everyone, you know, you get that uh, as an applicant that whole. We'll keep your thank, resume on thank file. You, for applying. you know, yes, exactly. So, so how do you know? And how has has this process made it easier for you to actually be able to truly keep tabs on someone and have uh, things set up so that way when an, a position does open up, you can say, oh, you know what, we got a resume a couple months back from someone who would be a great fit for this. How do you keep track of all that? It's pretty similar to tying it to the requisition. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, the the major design change we talked about is we used to tie people. This is getting technical, so I apologize That's to fine. everyone, but <laughs> we used to tie a person directly to a position. Okay. Um, and then we switched that around to tie them to the job order, which makes a lot more sense processing wise. But we kind of just reused that. So it, the tying them to the position. So if somebody does apply, mm-hmm. we link. They say, okay, they've applied for. The on-base administrator job. Okay, they've also applied for the HR recruiter job, mm-hmm. and and we can track that. We're they're marked as future consideration, which mm-hmm. is another feature of the system. And then if Christy ever wants to go back and and look at future consideration, mm-hmm. we've got a huge list of people that yes, they've applied for these four positions that they may or may not be candidates for, but we know they applied for them, so we can look that up at any time really, and then contact them again as needed. That's great. Yeah. It's nice to be able to have that that feature. And, and like you said, especially if someone comes across, you know, your, your desk or, you know, it's someone who would be a really good fit maybe for the company. Maybe they have some skills you could really, um, that the company could really use, but maybe they're just at that point isn't an opening. You know, I mean, I think yes. every company comes mm-hmm. across that at some point, you know, yes. maybe for whatever reason, they just can't hire at that moment. Um, but to be able to not lose sight of that, that excellent applicant be able to follow up with them later right I right. imagine is is very valuable it is and you know because that's that's one of the you know role you know one of my responsibilities as a recruiter is to make sure that I keep a candidate pipeline at yeah. all times so that is a nice you know aspect of you know the solution that we have built is that I do have those folks that when you know we have a solution architect available I have my future consideration that I can just go to and pull from okay and we do have the ability if somebody applies if we don't have an open position but they're such a strong candidate mm-hmm. we do have, have processes where we can just elevate it right to a director and say we we need to take a look at this person so okay. it, it doesn't just kill the whole right <laughs> the whole process if if they're not if we don't have an open requisition for them okay you can fast track that person right up to a director and say hey I think you really need to yes take a look at this okay yep. great so, you you know, I think you both mentioned at different points of the discussion um, a couple of things that were coming down the pipeline for uh, for your particular department and, and different additions that you're going to make to the solution. But are there any other things that you're thinking of for the future that would really make great enhancements for the hiring process at ImageSoft or anything that, um, that you've really been considering and have seen a need for? 
Well, I do a lot of um, reporting for our leadership team mm -hmm. um, to keep track of, you know, the positions that we have and, and you know, what is, you know, what what our, have our efforts been. Um, so Nathan is in the process of building me a really nice, shiny dashboard. I think as of like 1030 today, it's complete. Yes. <gasps> yeah. There yeah. you go. So that's been exciting. So I'll, I'll be able to, you know, give the information that I need to my leadership team with, you know, just a click of a button and not have to go through and count and, you know. That's wonderful. Look at several different filters. Just No one more filter. Excel spreadsheet. No, yeah, because yeah, that's what it is again, an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. But, yeah, it'll be really nice. And it's and it will also give them the ability at, even, at any given time mm -hmm. to go look for themselves. Mm -hmm. It may be something that I don't have to send them, that they'll just have the ability and say, well, I can go in and look at it at any time. Yeah, okay. It's it's, the reporting is very powerful, and I think mm -hmm. that's important for applicant tracking because you do need to, to look at your metrics and say, are we recruiting from the wrong place? Are we mm -hmm. recruiting the wrong types of people? Mm -hmm. So the report that I built is not just a bunch of data slammed on a screen. It's it's organized into, on one screen, charts. We've got um, pie charts. We have bar graphs, um, count, like counts, like little counts. gauges that show counts. Mm -hmm. um, so... And, and it is really at a click of a button coat, so you can lay out the data however you want. I built it 100% from scratch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's that's another reason we kind of went with OnBase to go back, you know, 50 questions, is <laughs> is that it has this reporting capability that lets us, if Christy wanted a different report tomorrow, we could start building that report tomorrow and make it as graphically amazing as we wanted to, or we could just throw a bunch of data at a screen, you know, <laughs> whatever we decided to do. <laughs> There's options. That's the there point. Are, there are yeah. options. There's yes. options. There are options. Well, that's pretty exciting. It sounds mm -hmm. like there will be some some really good capabilities coming up, and, and maybe even yep. when you get back to your desk, Christy. <laughs> sounds yeah, like. I know. <laughs> yeah, we also want to do online resume submission. Yes. Because yeah. Christy now will troll through. Um, well, that's not that's not correct. You put the positions out on on like Glassdoor and LinkedIn, and then get candidates who apply to that. Right. And right now, I um, I'm putting resumes in that I know I want to push through the system. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I don't I don't literally put in every single resume that we get. I mm -hmm. only put in the resumes of those that I know that meet the qualifications of the positions that we're looking for yeah. or have qualifications for future opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking at um, developing a system where we are putting in a URL where um, applicants will be able to, from the job description, go ahead and click on the URL and create their applicant object and upload their resume directly into OnBase. So That's I great. will no longer have to do that. Wow. Because mm -hmm. at large, we're 130 some odd odd people. If you're talking at an organization with 5,000 people, maybe oh, they yeah. have, even if they have a team of recruiters, that's really hard yes. to, to add all those. So it is easier for them to just passively collect mm -hmm. resumes. So this this will be a good solution. We actually had something, I had something <laughs> completely <laughs> built, but it, it kind of got a little, we got a little feedback at the end to change it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, to get a little techie, this was 100% developed through OnBase modules and functionality. There's no web development, no coding, okay. none of that. So. Uh, we can create. Might be in the future, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's uh, it. So if you did want to do an online resume submission portal, you can do it out of the box. Okay. With with the tool that we have. And, and maybe this is going a little bit outside of you know the the tr applicant tracking process because we're talking about when you receive them and everything like that. But Christy, do you find are there options for you to use OnBase to be able to to do that kind of proactive recruiting like when you you said you, you put positions out there on you know Glassdoor or LinkedIn um, you know but if you maybe you come across somebody or you, you as you're searching I don't know if you're doing you know proactive searching and looking for people that have a certain skill set is there a way for you to track those people before they even put in a, an application I guess I'm not Maybe not through on base. Not through on okay. base. Okay. Um, through the different, through those different um, LinkedIn or, or mm -hmm. Glassdoor, yes, um, but not in on base. Now I can I can, um, like if I'm sourcing for a position mm -hmm. that, um, you know, like 
say like a software developer, I may be looking through LinkedIn mm -hmm. and if I see a candidate that I like, I can upload their information into OnBase to have the Got manager it. review it. Yes. Now I may not have talked to this person yet because the manager hasn't given me the okay as Got to whether it. or not they feel that they're a fit, but yes, I do put passive people in there as well. Got it. Yeah, that's that's what I was yes. that's what I was asking. That's perfect. Yeah, cuz I, I imagine that's because your job is twofold, right? It's it's yes. not only it's managing the entire process of when people come in, you know, uh, applying for a, a an open position or maybe just, you know, submitting the resume when there isn't one open, but also when you're coming across qualified applicants. Correct. Uh, you know, there's there's more to to your job than just managing what comes in. So. Yes. Yes, it's yeah, head, it's sourcing. Headhunting is an important part of it. I yes. mean, the success rate isn't yeah. that high, but when you do get those people, they're really good mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's excellent. It, it, that sparks a little um, note in my mind, though. That is one of the one of the things that we track in OnBase is when I do upload a candidate into OnBase, I am putting the source of where their resume came from. Oh, okay. So that the manager knows, okay, if this came from LinkedIn, did it come from, did they apply through a job posting or is it a passive candidate? Mm. So I am able to set the resume source mm -hmm. so that the managers know. Okay that, hey, this person applied, or no, this person hasn't applied, and then, you know, and then they can come to me and say, well, okay, they didn't apply, we're, you know, let's talk more about them, and, you know. Yeah, and I imagine that would set the tone for the con the type of conversation Correct. That, that the manager would have yes. with, that, with that potential candidate. Yes. Okay. And it's just another data point that we could report on, so it helps mm -hmm. us develop better techniques, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we see, okay, software developers with skill set A, for whatever reason, none of these passive people are are willing to to talk to us you know what can we do to change that mm, kind of thing okay. so the more the more data in my opinion as somebody who does a lot of data analysis the more data the better okay excellent so if uh, if somebody wanted to try to figure out how to uh, implement onbase for their organization to manage their hr process with that um, what would be a good place for them to start lots of demos online um, on on their website so you can um, kind of get an idea of what it looks like and, and how it might yep, work for them. Yep. Okay. And we did a demo of this. I think the, the last podcast I was at, we did, it was just before our one of our big events where we demoed mm, a lot of, mm -hmm. of this stuff. Uh, and Applicant Tracking, the the Applicant Tracking 3.0 is what we called it. Right. Um, that was on display there. It got a lot, a lot of positive feedback from it. So I'm always willing to give a demo. If, if you want to get uh, see a demo of this, I will give you the best demo you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to hold him to that. So yeah, so definitely, it sounds like we could we could get in touch with with ImageSoft and and our team would be able to help uh, anyone listening that wanted to learn more about how it might be able to be implemented. So uh, I imagine the website ImageSoftInc.com is probably a good yep. place to start. Yep. Yep. And um, and that's and there's a, a lot of human resources, uh, you know, resource human resources resources <laughs> in the on the website there's a lot of i know there's a lot of white papers there's some videos things like that um in addition to the on base uh resources on highlands website i'm sure correct yep. excellent okay well thank you both for coming in today and for sharing the applicant tracking process and how others maybe can look at how to improve the process make it a little smoother for their own organizations we appreciate it thank oh, you yeah it was fun yeah and thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Paperless Productivity, where we tackle some of the biggest paper-based pain points facing organizations today. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us today for this episode of Paperless Productivity. This podcast is sponsored by ImageSoft, the paperless process people, which you can learn more about at imagesoftinc.com. That's imagesoftinc.com. Join us next time where you'll learn how to harness the power of technology, supercharge efficiency, and accomplish your organization's goals.